fun. A little bit of, you know, team uh, rivalry, I guess. It's slowly turning into a rivalry. Maybe just because of Ame, but, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely the way LGD have tweeted about it every now and then when they play each other. It's definitely seem like it's become, uh, I don't know, kind of, I'm trying to figure out what it would be equivalent to in sports, but maybe I think that's a one-sided rivalry because <laughs> TDC, they don't quite have the same like, Western social media presence as uh, LGD might have. That's very true. Um, I don't think CEC's Twitter is in that active. That's for sure. Yeah. It's, uh, They've certainly made some big strides in recent times as well as TDC. I mean, in a bunch of these other leagues we were talking remaining. about sparking an arrow, they'd come in as well through the open qualifiers, and remaining. now they've gone to the point where we're directing right to this one. And mm -hmm. uh, this is a great chance to stamp for authority one more time. And, oh, a pretty favorable record coming up against LGD as well, and they've been able to grab that vengeful spirit that we saw banned out in the first phase in the previous uh, previous series that we were watching. So we'll see if it's impactful. We, we've been talking a little bit about how China is trying to be one or two steps ahead of the meta with some of the picks, and I feel like Venge might be one of those things that they're trying to innovate. The Venge also screams to me, uh, at least in this region, Medusa. I I know that's kind of evolved into all of you, just being like Venge. Maybe Medusa comes in very quickly after but yeah, Queen of Pain coming through. That has been a very prevalent pick around the globe. Um, something that XM plays very well. Um, doesn't necessarily mean that it's him and Queen of Pain. I know a lot of teams have even gotten as far as to put him in the off lane or, or, or put her in the off lane, put her in the safe lane. So even it'll four, be interesting. Queen yeah, Pain. that too. Yeah. I, who was it? It was Snaking, I think, remaining. played an amazing Queen of Pain in the four position uh, that I saw. Snaking five seconds in C remaining. as well. They, they do it a little bit. Obviously, there's a lot of aggression in the Southeast Asia region, so it makes sense. Uh, I mean, the, the Deucer is good with the Venge. I feel like uh, Luna as well is something that pairs together quite well with it. Uh, well, see what they opt to go with. We didn't see some carry venge come out, but it just doesn't feel like it has quite the same level of impact as you might like. I feel like something else that's not been explored quite as much is you know the impact of the ags on the vengeful spirit as well, just for that little bit of fear that's coming through. Maybe trying to combo it together with a puck or something a little cheeky like that. Yeah, the puck. I mean, Jenkins kind of had this conversation. It was like puck is not in a good spot right now as a hero, but still gives you the tools necessary to like put your team fight and be that hero that it's supposed to be. Like, it's weird. He like, he's like, Puck's not that amazing, but at the same time, like you can do so much with the, the wing rift and the dream coil. And like, it's still a decent mid hero. It, it's, he, he's like, it's kind of, it doesn't make much sense in a way, but at the same time, it does because buddies are amazing. So I'm wondering if we would need here. I, I feel like that's kind of contradictory, right? Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, it very much is. It's got this quite <laughs> amazing spell. I think you just need to play it in the right way. It's never going to be like a traditional mid hero. It needs to be picked in that like S4 style where you're creating a ton of space with it. You're using it exclusively to shove out lanes in a really dangerous area. Um, sure, it's great for playmaking potential as well. And then you also see. I think in the Chinese region actually is one of the first places that I saw it. They've even picked like Puck Terrorblade and then gone Terrorblade Ags to be able to uh, use seconds, that to remaining. fear people away and get the guaranteed stun afterwards. Yeah. So uh, we'll, we'll see. There's remaining. still plenty of draft Five to go through. Remaining. And uh, I mean, Plus it's not super conventional either we've seen kp for tnc picking it up a little bit more in recent times and it just feels like an lgd style hero as well back when charles was playing that pause three he Dial picked it up a decent pick. amount but uh, now they're just gone top of the lane. i feel like they just want to stay true to themselves i gone with this with shadow demon um i by the way i just i had to, i have to point out i love that terrible dax i saw it in the chinese game like i had the chance to cast it and i was like oh my god this is amazing and then nobody else picked it up for a long time and i'm just like come on guys like it's it's so i guess it, yeah, i think it's really good but i guess i saw it in like the best possible situation where i was just like all right well this thing is amazing everybody should build it all the time but uh Brewmaster, yeah, for LGD. Uh, 11, of course, in the off lane, Chalice in the safe lane. 
What a lot of people don't know about Chalice is he, he will save laner to start his career off with Max Y. Um, a lot of people give him a lot of flack, and I think it's deserved because he's taking over for Ame in a situation where it's like Ame was such a good player for LGD, and he, you know, that history here that it's such big shoes to fill that like he missed his one CS and everybody's just like Chalice I can't believe he's in this position it, it's so hard for him to fill those shoes successfully and it's just like you can feel the pressure that's on him um, but I am fixing him in this safely and I love seeing this Kunkka um, a hero I remaining. would have loved to see in that previous series maybe for Aster but uh, now we get to see it here for LGD and Kunkka was once a four we would see FY on him every now and then but uh, with this lineup, I'm thinking very much more that it's going to be a core here. Yeah, I feel like with this Shattered Moon Disruption, uh, Disruptor, excuse me, support combo, it doesn't really fit FY's playstyle all that much. You know, he tends to be that big player hero, the one that needs to be positioned perfectly in something like a Clockwork, something like an Earthshaker. Even a Brewmaster, honestly, I could see making it work. But something you would assume, like the Shadow Demon, is perhaps going to be a little bit too passive for him yeah I, that's yeah you're right because like when you think of fy what's the first thing that comes to your mind remaining other than ruby shaker shaker yeah. five it's like, seconds remaining that's gonna be flashy give me something that does a lot more but i, I mean who knows he might even play the disruptor yeah right? i was and just thinking like, that He's praying for something like the spider legs just so that he can walk across a cliff and get a surprise like four man static dorm off, you know? Like that that's the sort of play that FI likes to make every single game. And, uh, team back. At the terrible a back. little bit, and against a Spectre it's not the worst pickup to have, but we might see something maybe even a little different coming up. Maybe a necro. Uh, we've seen that come up against a Spectre a fair amount of times. You're not really too worried about a clockwork trying to disrupt you a fair amount, but you do have class pick so they have the luxury of weighing and seeing what cdc want to round out their draft Ten seconds before Ten choosing seconds and they've got a little bit of extra reserve time Five remaining seconds remaining so uh, i think they should have a pretty good idea of how they want to round things out yeah, it's going back to the fy point he could certainly put the disruptor he's very versatile like that um he'll make anything look like a godly hero Dial um, team pick I, I love the Disruptor in the 4. I've seen Nova play both these heroes as well. Like, I think these supports, FY and Nova is one of, if not the best support duo in all of Dota right now, just the way they play off each other. Um, X Nova being the one who gives you that intel, brings down the vision. Somehow he's always got wards all over the map. I don't understand how this guy goes undetected for so long and just places wards so deep on the opposite seconds, side of the map. And then it's like FY uses that to maybe play like Nyx Assassin seconds, or something remaining. and seconds, all of a sudden overwhelm you in, in spots that you're like, they, they vision here? Oh my God. And it's just like, I, I like that they bounce off each other so well that honestly, right now I'm thinking, I don't know who's going to be on the Shadow Demon. I don't know who's going to be on the Like it, it's that kind of sport duo. They're so good at what they do. Yeah, and obviously that's a big win for LGD. You know, they're thinking, how are these lanes going to go? We don't want to make sure that we're being directly countered here. They still probably don't even know if this Queen of Pain is going to be bit, or if they're going to try and pace it up a little bit mm -hmm. and throw it into an offlane role. They're using um, all of the reserve time on the ban. Oh, sorry, all of their allotted on the ban, and now they're into the reserve time with the last pick. Uh, I'm not quite sure about what the lifestealer ban was for. It didn't really seem like something that they would be all that concerned running. I suppose maybe it's just a, a comfort style thing for Chalice. Uh, Amazing. I'm, it's, I don't know, not, not really the hero that I see him play all too often. I, he could honestly still be on the Kunkka too. Like I wouldn't be too yeah. shocked at that. Um, I would like to see what CDC is going to do here because they could potentially go for something else LGD. in the mid lane LGD. and I could be off lane or safe lane too I would probably say SRF is on the puck more than anything if I had to pick somebody out of him or act them to play it mm -hmm. I would agree so how are they going around things out I 
mean, now they've got that that nice combination together with the Puck Dream Coil and the Venge Swap. You can guarantee to get the stun off, and that leads me to think that they're probably going to try and get that sort of play happening uh, on the Brewmaster or the Kunkka. You know, someone that needs to get that survivability um, ability off. Uh, Kunkka, of course, with the Puck you can get the split off even just the drunken brawl you're able to uh, tank through a fair amount of damage and with the swap you're not going to be in such a vulnerable position that shadow demon can just walk up and disrupt them and prevent a lot of that aggression happening there's a medusa which i end up on the outside which i thought was going to be at cd season end but go james on the puck so a four puck not even a three puck it's srf on the clockwork and Victoria on the Venge. I was honestly thinking that James was going to be on the clockwork. He's such a Ashley player himself in that four position for CDC, but four puck. And I mean, I this is just the sort of stuff that happens if, when there's no Chinese professional Dota in three and a half weeks. They've probably had some time to, to workshop some things. I'm sure they've been screaming each other a fair amount as well. And uh, do you reckon there's any mind games going on here with CDEC with uh, choosing this Quap Arcana skin, considering they've got a Vengeful Spirit as well? <laughs> I'm pretty surprised that XM has that uh, second style unlock. It, I guess it's been out long enough these days, but mm. it, it, it's what, a thousand heroes that you have to hit? So he's been spamming the hero for sure. I can see why it's super strong. And, uh, hopefully for LGD, they don't think, oh, it's just Quap. The bench was, you know, or the other way around. <laughs> so we will see. The FY Shadow Demon. We weren't sure which way that was going to go, and then Sumnus plays the Kunkka, Chalice, and do so. Old Eleven, of course, was going to be on that. Bro. I, it's, I, 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 both Chalice and, um, and Ame are going to need a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Who's playing the mid game there? I mean, other than like, maybe Kunker, I guess Ex Nova playing this Disruptor and Ame on this Spectre, there's not really anyone that, like, you're synonymous with that style of hero, you know? Like, <laughs> it, it, you're seeing a lot of familiarity with a lot of these things, but I don't know, we'll, we'll see if XM's able to pull it out. Clearly playing a lot of Quap, and I think it was only a couple of months ago he hit 10k, so he's very good in his own right. When you're in those pubs, you need to be able to be self-sufficient. Uh, when you're going up against someone who's a beast, like maybe uh, you're going to need every little shred of skill you can get. To get the lane matchups stay standard, it looks as though. Thirty seconds to battle. The battle begins. Radiance Courier has been killed. 
Dyer's courier has been killed. Radiance Courier Behold. has been killed. Radiance Courier has been killed. 
Radiant's courier has been killed. Check out! Radiant's top tower is under attack. Point of fight or what? Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's structures are fortified. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower is Ooh, under attack. Gold for my chest. Radiant's bottom is tower is out. under attack. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant are scanning.
Dyer's top tower has fallen. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower Ooh, is under attack. Dyer's middle tower is under attack.
Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant are scanning. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Radiant's top tower is under attack. is under attack. Structures are fortified.
gift from the Tempest of Battle. has fallen. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's courier has been killed. Radiant are scattered. A gift from the goddess. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant's 
bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Bottom tower is under attack. Dire victory. Yeah. 